There's creative families and creative people. But in all of us, you'll find the creative spirit. Hey, everybody. What is up? Listen, I want to welcome you to the very first episode of The Creative Spirit. Woo! Okay, was that too loud? Like, did you have to cover your ears? I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Um, listen, you guys, I'm so happy about um, this podcast in the making, if you will. Um... Yeah, we're out here in these streets, and we're taking some new risks, and I'm all for it. Um, let me introduce myself. I am Talisha, and, you know, my purpose for the creative spirit is just um, to, to offer an opportunity for creatives to share of themselves. And in return, I hope it gives others sort of that pause that they need to just see what else lies within them. Um, my goal is to motivate others to dream new dreams and to walk new paths in faith and in income and in anything else. Um, I definitely want this podcast to be a space where we can learn and share from people who are like us, but as well as from people who may not be so much like us. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with our first episode. <laughs> okay. Um, so today, or actually for this first season, I want us to focus on this particular topic. So what's in there anyway? You know, I was thinking about when I was really, really, really young, and for some reason, I fell in love with an entertainer, an entertainer by the name of Charlie Chaplin. Now, I'm sure I just dated myself to many, 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 many people, but some of you, you do remember this um, this performer, and it was very interesting because. Um, all of his performances, or at least the ones that I saw, they were basically silent movies, if you will. Um, he basically captivated my attention with movement, gestures, pantomime, um, and he just really, it was the creative aspect within him that really, really caught my attention. And I'll tell you why I think it caught my attention. I think what was in him was also in me. And the guy never spoke a word. But what he was able to offer of himself is something that I found that I love to do anyway. And so in so many ways, I would see him performing and entertain it. And I would also pantomime um, and entertain for others. Um, just sort of observing this creative aspect of me in retrospect. I love acting, even though my personality was more of an introvert. Um, I love how laughter could disrupt gloom. In fact, I think many times, I mean, listen, let's not take our comedians for granted um, because what they're able to craft and to mold and, and how they're able to lift heaviness, it's definitely a skill and definitely um, something that we should, should hone in on more and be more thankful for. Um... But again, back to observing the creative aspect within me, you know. So, yes, I enjoy the acting aspect. I enjoy writing. Listen, was it perfect? Absolutely not. I mean, sometimes, you know how you save some of your um, your writings and you go back and you look at what you wrote and it's like, oh my gosh. What, was I in class? Did I, wait, 
did I go to school? That's the bigger question. Did did I go to school? Um, and that's just me being funny, but it's sort of like the passion was there to create stories, to create characters, um, even though it wasn't quite perfect. I also remember having a little bit of an entrepreneur aspect within me um, early on as well. And I'll give you one quick example of this. When I was a kid, I would go to school every day and we would get, you know, free lunch. And for some reason, I just never noticed Nutty Buddies near the cartons of milk. So my routine was sort of like this. I would get my chocolate milk because I hated white milk and or cow's milk as they say and I would get my chocolate milk and then I would go down the line and get me that delicious fiestata what y'all know about that fiestata y'all don't know about no good pizza so anyways I would go through the line and give the lady my little three digit number and then I would go on to eat my food I would clean the plate but one day I would go through my routine and I would see a new want. I don't know why I thought I could just pick it up and go on about my business, but that's exactly what I did. I got my chocolate milk. I got my nutty buddy. I got my meal for that day. Went through the line, gave the lunchroom lady my three digit number and went on my way until she said, hey, 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 come back here. You've got to pay for that nutty buddy. I was a little bit confused. I should have known better. But I was just confused. My teacher looked at me and said, Talisha, you don't have 40 cents for your nutty buddy? I said, no. My teacher reached in her pocket, pulled out 40 cents, and let me tell you, when I ate that nutty buddy, I had a new experience. Woo! The ice cream, the chocolate, and listen, they never seem to put enough nuts on those on those ice cream cones, but I was hooked. I would go home shortly after that and I would say, hey, dad, can I have 40 cents for my um, snack tomorrow? And dad said, listen, don't you get free lunch? And, you know, in retrospect, that taught me many, many, many different things. But out of that, what I decided to do was this. I used to love to just scribble and draw. I love, this is so weird, quote unquote weird. I loved lines in the same way that I love words. I love curvatures and the width of a line. And I love clean paper and I love smudges and erasing it. And I love all those things. And so I would just draw and doodle. and. From what I had, somehow around my house, I found these um, these stickers that had a blank side, but a and but on the opposite side of the blank side was like sticky, like stickiness. So I would draw on the front, and then I would take my images to school and try and sell it to my friends. Can you believe that? Now, when I'm thinking about this, I'm like, okay, no one in my family at that time. I, I had not seen anyone sell anything before. At that time, I had not, I cannot say that I was aware of any entrepreneurial spirit within my family at that time. So, where did this come from? I would go to school. And my friends would say, oh, I want one. And I'm like, you do? They would say, how much? I hadn't even thought of a price. But you know how much? Does You know how much I charged them? The same price of that nutty buddy, baby. I earned, I created wealth for myself. 
and bought myself another nutty buddy. I didn't go on the playground and bully somebody. Stick them up. I want 50 cents. No. Didn't wait till somebody fall asleep on a mat and take their dollar bill. No. I thought, I have a want and I have an ability. What if I put my ability to work and then what if I did not think so low of my ability but I would charge many of us we have great abilities but we don't charge some of us don't charge at all and some of us don't charge well enough and so that's sort of how I connected to Charlie Chaplin Chaplin um, and you know, and I didn't let imperfection stop me from, number one, dreaming, nor did I let the imperfection of my ability at that time um, stop me from trying. Some of us don't dream, and some of us don't try. You know, I was reading... Um, well, I saw a portion of an article of, um, of NPR, and the title was New Businesses Soared to Record Highs in 2021. Here's a taste of one of them, and it was by, the article was by Andrea HSU, if you want to go and look it up. But part of what that article talked about was some facts that the U.S. Census um, had unveiled, which was basically they found that there was about 5.4 million new business business applications that were filed in 2021. That it surpassed the record um, that was in 2020 of 4.4 million. I'm like, wait a minute. People during the pandemic uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, lost their jobs. Many people lost their health. And yet, they decided to make a jump. They decided to make a change. The article even talks about that some people, you know, they didn't lose their job. They had stable careers. But something within them was unstable. And I think all too often, we don't pay attention to the unstable aspect within us our emotions are all kinds of you know just in a rocky place and we look at our unhappiness and we just go on with our lives we ignore our unhappiness which i definitely don't think is a god thing but Many, many people decided to make that jump during the pandemic. And what do we find is that many of them were simply creatives. You know, I was looking at, um, and I was looking at Genesis 1 and 1. And if you grew up in the church, you know it by heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or the heaven and the earth. And... I don't know, just one day that word stood out to me, creative. I was like, hmm, God is a creative. God is a creative. And I just begin to think about that connection. I have a little bit of a God gene in me. You have a little bit of a God gene in you as well. I love um, Genesis 1 and 1, and then as it go, goes on, it talks about this earth that we all live on. And it said, it was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And I'm like, wow. One aspect of this God gene is being willing to work with things that don't have form. 
do you know how many people who are just, they just prefer to have the established way? The established job, the established sound. But a creative works with that which is not always established. They're not intimidated by void. And when they are in the presence of the darkness, boy, it just sort of like stirs them up. They're thinking, hmm, how can I bring light? to this situation? How can I bring effectiveness to this situation? And then maybe one of my favorite parts of um, Genesis 1 and verse 2, it says in part, and the Spirit of God moved. I love that. Not only did the Spirit of God recognize, okay, hmm, this doesn't quite have good form yet. But it has potential. This doesn't, this look, this is looking kind of dark right now. Hmm. How can I move? I think many creatives, if they are bound by some force other than the spirit of God, they become stuck. They find themselves in a stuck place. But here it says, and the spirit. Spirit of God moved. I want to encourage you to move. Move your mind in a new place. Move your dreams to a new place. Move your hope to a new place. And literally move your body to a new place. Maybe some of you need to physically address address wise move to a new place but let God speak to you about that but I love this the Lord says this this doesn't this 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 don't have form but he didn't abandon the earth you know he didn't abandon the possibility so don't you abandon your possibilities no say okay this this artwork mm, needs some work, but keep moving. Don't get stuck in the what ifs. I love that God said, let there be light, and there was. So that sort of speaks to, you got to declare this thing. You got to believe this thing like, let there be um, great artistry. Let there be greater Writing, take it to the next level, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so definitely something was in there, something was in Charlie Chaplin, Chaplin. something was in me. I believe that something was the God gene called creativity in the beginning, God created he's a creator so how do you know if you are creative well you might be a creator if you sort of have a longing to bring things into existence i mean you may see that your neighborhood has not changed in over 20 years and it's been bothering you for 20 years why you why has it bothered you for 20 years why hasn't, why hasn't that died? Why do you keep seeing better for your community? Why do you keep imagining a different sound in your ear for your music? Maybe you're creative. Maybe you have that God gene within. Creatives also love to shape and form. You might look at a dress and think, hmm. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really complement her silhouette well. I wonder if, mm, which, mm, can we move this here and shift that there? Can we move this particular bar of the song here and maybe take this particular note and put it there? Creators love to shape. They don't mind mixing. Um, some people, they don't want to shake things up. They don't, no, 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 this is done. This is, this is done. 
they are afraid to reimagine. And I, I love the spirit of God because I love God because he loves to mix. I mean, if you went outside tomorrow and everything was green, wouldn't you go back in the house? I would. For sure. I'm going back in the house and I'm going to call somebody. Like, listen, do y'all see what I see? Because there's value in variety. There's value when there being a mixture of things. So creators aren't afraid to mix. I wonder, do you love bringing things to life? Creators love bringing things to life. Um, one of my sisters does hair. And she's always experimented. I would see her um, experimented with hair like as a preteen and teenager. Lord, this girl was putting the hair in the microwave, but it would have like rollers on it. And you know, when you put hair in the microwave and you, listen, it goes on for one or two minutes. Listen, and it has that smell in the house. You kind of be looking like, what is going on? But I can say that more times than not, when she got done with that hairstyle, wow, she had brought something to life. And by her not being afraid to try, and that's a word for somebody, by her not being afraid to try, she could take what she was practicing on others and then practice it on me, practice it on my other sister, Honey, she did my hair one time, and I remember I had to walk down the steps. We had these stairs in our house as a kid, and I remember when my hair was done, and I had them curls, honey. I couldn't even walk the same, and I was five years old. Honey, I had to walk down sideways. You can bring life to someone. That's what a creative does. <sighs> Do you bring life just by dancing? Do you bring life just with your words? Oh my gosh, my my father-in-law and my mother and my brother, um, they're very gifted with words. You would think that all of them have MA degrees in counseling. But it's because I believe they weren't afraid to sort of step out there and learn and practice how to encourage, how to listen. Creatives bring things to life. When you leave the presence of those people who are gifted with that, gosh, you feel like you can achieve something. You feel like your mistakes can't hold you down. You feel like you can reach again. So, when we say what's in there, it is the God gene called creativity. Clearly, we are a reflection of God, and I believe that just as there are depths in the spirit, there are also depths within our abilities. Okay, great. You know how to flip a burger and you can season that thing up well, but what else can you do with that ground beef? I mean, if you've been in the store lately and seen what they can do with cauliflower, oh my gosh, somebody is creative. Because I almost looked at cauliflower just like it was sesame seed chicken. I almost picked up a bag. I said almost. So there are depths within our abilities. There are also depths within purposes. Just because you served as this for the first 10 years of your life, it doesn't mean you have to be that for the next 2, 5, or 10 years of your life. So put the negative what-ifs away. 
What if it don't work out? What if I take a step in faith and then I fall? I'm going to look embarrassed. What if I got these kids? This No, don't do this to me. Don't ask me to take faith walks. And I got kids and I got a family and I got a wife. Don't ask me to do it. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is definitely asking you to do it. Put away your ageism. So what? You're 60. Okay. What does it have to do with what God can do? So what? You're 40. What does that have to do with what your drive can do? Put your historical failures away. I think one of the barriers to a creative is how we often replay our historical failures. I mean, we play this stuff as if we never had a success ever. Well, that that time I, I failed. Or even for some people, well, I, I did it three times, so I don't need to be trying. Say, what? What are you saying? I will never forget, there was an oil company some years ago. And one of their, I don't know the right terminology, but one of their machines ended up causing there to be a huge oil spill. And I don't want to name the company, but maybe this, maybe you, you know about situations, situations like this. And, oh my gosh, it's sort of like it killed so much of the economy um of a particular uh city and i will never forget how soon this company was up and running after they had did what they did to to people and for some reason that just sort of like spoke to me i'm like we see companies make failures all the time but we don't see them saying well well, everybody saw my mistake. I don't need to do that no more. Say, what? No, these people continue running. They continue imagining. They continue dreaming. They see to themselves, okay. How can I take this idea to the next level? Like, how can we make this better so it doesn't happen again? I mean, yeah. So, what kind of declaration do you need to make? Let there be what? Let there be a business. Let there be understanding. Let there be a new sound. Let there be a new movie. My gosh, don't we need some new content for movies? Don't we need some of these organizations to be shifted and changed and changed? You can do it because what's in you is a God gene called creativity. Hey guys, I'm your host, Talisha. I want to thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of The Creative Spirit. Uh, today is June 24th, 2022. I'll see you next time. Bye.